Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 97th episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday the 21st of September, recording it on Monday the 20th. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands as usual. You can see my handles on the screen if you've got anything to share, comments, suggestions, etc. Please don't hesitate and use them. I already know because I recorded the show and I'm doing this at the end that the show is chock 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 full and I need to do a very short introduction. We're going to talk about asset class rotation, we're going to talk about sector rotation and while we're talking about sector rotation I'm also answering a question from the mailbag about the rotation of the energy sector. So not going to waste any time, let's start with last week's rotations. This is Sector Spotlight. The rotations for asset classes. Interesting week last week. Interesting time period that we are in right now because I believe we're in some sort of a transition. On the right hand side we have the daily RRG and the rotation here is fairly clear. We have the ITOT and V&Q tails. Those are the risk on asset classes clearly heading towards the lagging quadrant in a negative RRG heading while the whole fixed income complex with high yield corporates government bonds and even the US dollar picking up again all moving in that north eastern direction at a strong RRG heading and we have both um, both commodity tails uh, back into the leading quadrant uh, in the top right and Still heading higher on the RS ratio scale um, on at stable momentum. It's the highest momentum of this whole universe. Uh, you can see that here by just looking at the um, momentum scale, the RS momentum scale. So the rotation that we've seen last week is pretty much uh, one that belongs to a risk off environment. Um, uh, especially if you if you think that VBI and X is is a is composed of 60% stocks and 40% bonds and commodities are not in this index. So commodities give you an opportunity to really create alpha versus that, um, versus that benchmark because they're not included. ITOT heading down, V&Q heading down and if we look at the price movements then we see that ITOT was uh, 40 bips lower which is 20 bips below VBI and X. PBNX itself lower 20 bips. Uh, government bonds and V&Q unchanged and the other ones slightly higher with GSG up 1.6 and the dollar up 60 basis points. DJP is up only up 0.5. So um, again, clearly a, um, a, a rotation that I think belongs to a risk off environment. And we will have a deeper look into how VBINX and the major indexes are behaving later on in the show. When we bring that to our weekly RRG then um, this is of course it didn't change that much uh, in that one week that we're evaluating now but you can see that ITOT it, it already started to head left i.e. lower on the RS ratio scale last week uh, and that that seems to be continuing right now. We have the, the both uh, commodity tails, DJP and GSG curling back up, which is um, uh, in sync with the rotation that we see on the daily here. And you see that V&Q, despite the fact that on the weekly RRG it's still the strongest measure in terms of RS ratio, is still uh, moving lower on the RS ratio scale and at a negative heading. All the fixed income related ETFs are inside improving or as it is high yield almost in improving it rotated back up so the message that we're getting here in my opinion is that the weekly for a while already and the regulars will know that we've been discussing that is in some sort of a transition in terms of uh, stocks versus bonds that's the most important relationship that we can get out of this RRG and that is now, um, it seems to be getting momentum. It seems to be starting or really starting with, with all these tails pointing in a northeastern direction and ITOT and V&Q 
together moving in that southwestern direction. Now let's have a quick look at some of the individual charts. If we start, with, well, I mean, let's start with, um, with the new 52-week highs. That's a, a metric that I, I added to my list a few weeks ago because the, the divergence was getting so strong because this uh, this, this black line here is the uh, S&P 500 that is plotted behind price, that's the SPX. And the blue line here and the, the gray line is the new 52-week highs. And the, the blue line here is a 12-week 12, um, 12 moving average. And usually, uh, as, which is, I think, intuitive, you would expect when the market goes up, those that that number of new 52 week highs to go up as well because it's supporting higher prices and what we see pretty much since june is that that number of new 52 week highs started to decline while the market continued to to rise and that's a sign that the base for that market rise was getting narrower and narrower <clears throat> so that is, that is um, it seems to be coming to fruition now. If we quickly, I don't look too much at volatility. There, there are many commentators here on stock charts who uh, do a great job looking at volatility uh, and probably know a lot more about volatility than I do. But I think this is a quite interesting move because it's coming out of this one, two, four, five month base. And that's quite significant. So uh, I'm going to pay attention and I mean general interpretation rising volatility is not so good for risk markets it's it, it, it points to uncertainty investors don't like uncertainty so I'm going to take this as an additional warning signal or an additional um, supportive metric for uh, a more risk off market environment that we are entering right now we quickly go to the uh, to the US dollar. We discussed it. I even wrote an article uh, with a pretty big headline saying that it was a pretty big move ahead or expected a pretty big move ahead. Last couple of weeks, uh, that did not really work out. Um, we, we came back on it the last few shows. Uh, I wrote that article right here when it was breaking out, or at least it seemed to be breaking out. We fell back in about three weeks long. We we stayed below that resistance level and it looks as if we're now getting back up. The good news is that the low that came in was higher than the previous low. So that sort of upward momentum, upward trend is still there. Uh, so I'm going to stick with my statement that I'm looking for a higher US dollar price. And if we translate that to, uh, to Euro dollar, then this is the chart that I was looking at. And I even had to go to a uh, line chart because the, let me show you. this is the chart that we wrote about. This is where I sort of called this head and shoulders that it was completed and we would see a big move lower. Obviously we reversed, we went back above the neckline and we're now back down again. And that's why this chart was in a, was drawn as a line chart because <clears throat> when you draw as a line chart, you have a little bit more uh, a clearer view on where the lows are. And if you connected those lows and you can see that, um, that that neckline was probably already violated right here in mid July. And we had the two, the two rallies bounced off of that uh, neckline. And it's, it's now doing that again. So I'm now looking for on a closing basis, weekly closing basis, 117. And if we go to the um, to the price chart, it's it's one sixteen sixty. So um, just to be on the safe side, one sixteen sixty. If one sixteen sixty and euro dollar breaks lower, I think all ingredients are there for a move to the one eleven one ten area. That's for the uh, for the euro dollar uh, or the U.S. dollar view. Now here is uh, here is ITOT. Uh, and this is, this is only today, uh, recording it on Monday, as you know, market just opened. Um, Europe, pretty weak day on average, or down around 2%, most markets, and the US just opened 1.5% um, lower, so uh, not too good. Of course, it's only half a day's trading that we're looking at instead of a week. 
uh, but it looks as if the uh, the direction has set. There's, there's a nice gap. We can close that. But the you know we're we're comfortably below this rising trend line. If you if you put that on a daily chart, you get a much more granular view. We don't do that here in sector spotlight, at least not with these long term uh, views for the indexes. But I do think that we're seeing some sort of a transition, uh, and the market's going into a new phase for um, for the equity bond rotation, for the whole asset class rotation. Here is uh, here is spy, <clears throat> same story. Uh, it looks as if we're breaking out of that rising channel. Too early to to really call that yet. We're going to do that on Friday, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it because it's the first time since April that we're violating that we're really violating this rising trend line. So it's a pretty important one to keep an eye on, I think. Now, if we go to the uh, to both charts that we've been monitoring here, um, uh, aside from relative strength and RRG, uh, we have SPY here, and we've been pointing out that negative divergence, and, and it, it kept creeping onward and kept creeping onward. Looks as if we're now actually materializing that negative divergence, because as you can see here, we're even, we even broke below the lowest level of the RSC over the last few months. It's an important thing that negative divergence was still intact, and we now see that the MACD has, has really started to, to roll over, and um, the MACD line and the trigger line are now really starting to diverge, which also indicates um, a pickup of momentum, and in this case, it's negative momentum, and you can see here that even the shorter-term trend line is now broken. This is the weekly RRG, uh, the weekly uh, chart for SPY. If we go to the, to the daily, then we see the gap down here. Uh, we see that we're challenging this support area around 434 and a half. Maybe, maybe we can see a little bounce back to the 440 level, but I think that that's where now resistance will be coming in. Again, look at the divergence here. I didn't draw it in, but you can, you don't even need a line here to see that how that divergence is now playing out. We're dropping below 30. So all in all, the, uh, the negative stuff that's been building up over the last few months seems to be coming out. And, and the most important thing for us to determine is to figure out, um, A, if we are really in a new phase of the market, and I'm getting more and more convinced that we are, which means that we will very likely see a little bit more downside in the near future. However, if you go back and you look at all the first shows, first sector spotlight shows on, on the first Tuesday of the month, when we look at the monthly charts, all of those are still in uptrends. And we've been, uh, the last three, four months, I think, I've been adding this table with the, uh, the percentage downside risk for each sector, for each market. And they were quite considerably. And, and you know, SPY is a good example. There is, there is the, the market ran up so much that we can have a significant down move without hurting the long-term uptrend. So that's, that's where I'm positioned right now. I think that the long-term uptrend is intact, that we're now moving into a new phase, that we're now going to see a lag down in that uptrend. And, and the, um, the thing, that the job that we need to do is to, to figure out, to assess where this new phase will end. So where is the new buying opportunity? That's, that's probably the big question. We've been, we've been touting, we've been telling the market is risky, it was not enough base, there is, there is very little breath, uh, market's getting weaker, we have negative divergence, we have confusing rotation, all of that stuff. It looks as if we're now getting into that down move that we've been looking for. And now is the job to figure out where will this move end and when is the time to start picking it up again. So um, if, you go, if you look, then we, we're now back at levels that we saw in July. So that's about two months ago. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we see levels uh, going down a little bit further. And... Um, Let's see where we got the weekly, the weekly RRG, if we can figure out, you know, so like 400 or maybe even, you know, so th this whole, this, this whole move higher that really started when we broke above that FAB high, that FAB 2020 high, that we're talking about 320, 330. That's around 100 points in the S&P 500. 
that's a considerable move lower. And I think that even if, if the S&P would, even, I'm, I'm not saying that it will, but, but there is plenty of room for the S&P to move lower without harming its very long-term uptrend. So to round it up, wrap it up, um, it looks as if the market is going into a transition mode. It looks as if we're going into that um, expected decline, see prices go lower in the next couple of weeks, maybe even months. So what's important now is to assess how that move will pan out, uh, where it will end, where it will stop, and what is a good moment to get back in. And we'll just have to let the market uh, tell us that moment. So what did sector rotation bring us last week? On the right hand side, we have the daily RRG on the left hand side, the weekly. So if we start with the daily, we have five trading days and it includes Monday the 20th. So that's today. Um, it's 1 p.m. in the US now. <clears throat> so that's where these prices are updated. Now what you can see is a, is a nice move for energy XLE. Uh, discretionary had a good week and then we had rolling over tills for technology real estate and communication services utilities made a weird hook back to the left materials continued lower industrials continued lower financials and healthcare picked up on the momentum scale and staples staples remained stable so if we look at the um the percentage changes that's quite significant uh, it's been a while that we had these big changes so uh, materials down six percent let's bring that back to last friday so we see the impact of today because monday the 20th is um is starting off pretty weak we had an opening which was down i think one and a half percent and right now we are i need to scan my screen here more than two percent in the s p and the dow so um, <clears throat> as, I, as I spoke about in the asset allocation section, market in transition rolling over, sort of risk off scenario. And the rotation of last week did not really emphasize that yet, did not really support that yet. The rotation on the weekly is supporting it for a couple of weeks already. So last week was a pretty good week and it looks as if we're rolling over right now, so especially if you look at tech, real estate, communication services, they're going down. Uh, discretionary is not really to be expected um, in a weak market, nor is energy. Um, I was expecting utilities and staples to do a little bit better, but I think that they might be surfaced this week. Again, if we, um, this is last Friday, and then, you know, materials was down three and even energy was up 3%. So if we just move to today, then we see that all of a sudden energy is down 3.7%. Uh, over five days and materials is down six percent so there's quite quite a big move underway today now how does that fit into the into the weekly RRG we see that the real estate is inside weakening so that tail here is supporting that move lower in the weakening quadrant despite the fact that real estate is still one of the stronger sectors uh, on the hours ratio scale so we're we're actually looking for this to, to, to curl back up and the same goes for XLC. If we blow that up here, then you can see that that tail is nicely moving higher, sort of shaving off that 100 level. See how that goes. So we need, to, we need that to happen in the daily RRG very, very soon. <clears throat> on, the, um, on the weekly, we see now a, uh, a hook. This is, the, this is including today. So this little hook here for utilities is the cause of just today. And that's, um, it's, it's bit, might be confusing, gotta be a little bit careful. So at the end of last week, we were like here. This is the, um, the Friday of the week starting September 13th. And this is the weekly that starts on Monday the 20th, which is, which is today. And you will see this date 
uh, through all this week going forward. Now, I want to use this opportunity to also answer one reader question that came in on the energy sector. And I'll, we'll go over the charts later on and, and we'll discuss all that. But I thought it was a good question to integrate in the overview of um, sectors. And the question came in from John. And John says, looking at XLE for the past five weeks, week ending 913, it has outperformed the SPY on the weekly chart. Looking back 23 days, XLE has outperformed SPY. The daily chart shows it in the leading quadrant, yet weekly is turning up in the lagging quadrant. It seems to me that weekly XLA can never get out of lagging if the daily ROG isn't in leading. I feel like I'm missing some excellent XLA returns as the daily ROG drags the weekly out of lagging. XLE may have fallen behind, but now it has to really outperform to get in the lead. It seems to be doing that now. I would hate to miss out on this run up. Is the, I think it's meant to say, is this foolish greed? John, um, a lot of items in this question. <clears throat> Let me try to get over them. Past, past last five weeks, that's the week. So that's this RRG here. That's the last five weeks and bring it here, it's starting to turn up. That's, that's correct assessment. Now, if we go back 23 days on the daily, that's 23 days on the daily, fit it and highlight it, you can see the rotation going into the leading quadrant. All, all good. We have seen, by the way, um, very big swings in the energy sector over the last few months. We, we, we've addressed them uh, in the show a few times. And the, the, I think the most in, important thing behind this question or to answer this question is that RRGs show you trends in relative strength, not necessarily performance. So for the past five weeks, it has outperformed SPY on the weekly chart. That's correct. Minus 1.4, where SPY lost 2.5%. Um, so it was better by about 1%. Looking back 23 trading days, so sorry, this is 23 trading days, so um, outperformed SPY by 1%. On the weekly, actually outperformed SPY by half a percent. The trend, however, on the weekly is is very weak. It's the lowest on the RS ratio scale. It's the lowest reading on the RS ratio scale. Um, and that's an important thing that tells you something. And, and what John is, the assessment that John is making uh, absolutely correctly is that um, it can never get out of leading if the daily isn't leading. So, so it is, and it, we need a lot, and I, I've, I've explained this before, you need a lot of positive relative strength and price movement for XLE to drag the weekly tail out of that lagging quadrant, especially when it's so low on that RS ratio scale. Now, when you see this, I can imagine that it might be tempting and uh, sometimes it may be confusing. What you need to get in your head is that these tails are showing you trends in relative strength and the rate of change of that, of that trend. So, Forget about the absolute performance, just look at the trend. And with that in your head, take a look at the chart for XLE. If you look at the chart for XLE, and especially at the relative strength chart, and you can see that it is why it wasn't lagging for so long. And we've addressed the improvement of, of relative strength here, but also said that this horizontal boundary that started showing up um, Q2 2020, and again was tested in March 2021 and again in May 21, that's probably the most important level from a relative point of view that I'd be watching. Um, combine that with what you see in the price chart. And I think we discussed here in Sector Spotlight the wedge that was executed and, and prices going down. So we fulfilled the first target based on that wedge. But this chart is not looking fantastically strong. Uh, and also the relative strength is not fantastically strong, despite the fact that we broke out. We're going more into a sideways move. And from that 
upper boundary, upper barrier, we seem to be moving lower in terms of relative strength. And then when you open up your, um, your dashboard for today and you look at the sector summary, then all of a sudden energy pops up 4% um, lower. So yeah, may, it, there may be good opportunities, but you know, since last Friday, there was opportunity on the short side. Um, so to answer your question, John, um, there are definitely good opportunities, but it, from my point of view and my investment horizon, which is crucial for these sorts of decisions, um, energy relative, the, the relative strength of the energy sector is still, um, is still far too weak for me to become very enthusiastic about positions in XLE. Uh, maybe you may see uh, a, an intermediate opportunity or short-term opportunity when you see some sort of price structure on the, uh, on the price chart, uh, maybe in combination with an RRG. But for the, for the near to medium term, I still think that, that that relative strength constellation for the energy sector is still, is still weak. It has not bottomed out. It's not really one of the leading sectors. If you compare it to, you can compare it to technology and healthcare stuff. This, this energy is just not there yet. Um, is it foolish greed? I don't know. Um, it, it's a difficult market for sure. I mean, energy, because of the, the height of the range, the big moves that has been showing, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty tricky there. But, um, you know, for the time being, I'd be very careful with, uh, with energy, especially if we drop below, back below 45 and, and even the 42 and a half. If that goes, then that relative strength will push it, you know, will, will go much, much lower. Let's quickly wrap up with a, uh, with a few charts um, uh, following the, uh, the, the stuff that we saw in the RRG. The, here are my sector spotlight charts. Uh, materials going lower. Watching here, this break, 78.30. That's an important level in materials. And the relative strength, obviously, is already um, uh, weak and weakening. Uh, communication services, looking for this to curl back up. The price chart is now giving way. This is a weekly. So these are all weekly charts, which is you know, not, not finished yet. Um, the good thing is that the RRG lines are starting to pick up and the red strength line is holding up above the breakout level. Energy we just discussed, financials, the unadjusted version could be a double top. Interesting pattern to watch, especially when relative strength drops back below that one here. Industrials seems to be breaking out, double top pattern, very weak relative strength. Technology holding up. We're, we're not able there, but the trend is still there. So we're going to see some, some relative weakness, but this is still a sector that is in a major uptrend. Staples, hopefully we can hold up here. It's a, it's a um, defensive sector, so we need to watch out here. If that continues that breakout, then Staples will be one of the leading sectors going forward. Real estate still doing pretty well. I need to go very quick now because I'm running out of time. Utilities, uh, hopefully this relative strength support will hold up. We will see healthcare, that's still a pretty good chart and it looks that relative strength is still holding up and putting in a bottom there. So we got this defensive healthcare, uh, staples and utilities still showing good charts. Discretionary, although it was good on the RRG, I think this is up, about to, to roll over uh, and now we're around Ladies and gentlemen, this was Sector Spotlight for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching. Remember, Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. And I sure hope to see you again next week at a new episode of Sector Spotlight here on Stock Charts Television. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.